All right, hey, welcome guys. My name is Mike Kerrigan here at the Wealth Dynamics headquarters. Coming to you live, it is Friday night. You guys could be out doing anything right now. Hey, there's a concert going outside right now. I don't exactly know who's playing. If I don't know, I mean, hey, who knows what's going on out there. But they got some music playing, and I have you guys tuning in live tonight on Facebook, Instagram, uh, wherever you're at, LinkedIn, whoever you're at tonight, thank you for joining us. So what is Wealth Dynamics? Wealth Dynamics is a company that's evolved over the last eight years, and we've been putting together what we have today, which is our company culture. And we're tuning in to you guys live to talk about what school should have taught us, but didn't, how to create wealth and to leave a legacy, okay? So we're gonna be talking about tonight. You are joining us tonight for our training. We do this every Friday night. It's available free for those who are tuning in live, those who can come to Anchorage here. And this is really a training for our team here on how we can become better at servicing everybody out there, our clients, future clients, and people that need, our, need to know our services. So tonight, thank you for joining us. We're gonna be talking about some training as well. And without further ado, we gotta have Grant here. He's gonna be talking about why you should never make sense of failures. We saw the fight last night. Just goes to show you, man, you can't take eight months off, eight months of drinking and showing off and bragging and running your mouth. You can still get cracked. You got, you, you know, huh? Yeah, too many days off, man. Too many days off. You got to pay the price every day, folks. Otherwise, you lose. Period. You will get beat. You're going to get beat in the marketplace if you don't train every day. I'm wearing my Cardone University t-shirt because if you don't train every day, don't expect to make the sale. If you don't train every day when you leave here, do not expect your people to follow up. If you don't train every day, do not expect your people to answer the telephone correctly. If you don't train every day, do not expect your people to be motivated to do the right thing. If you don't train every day, if you don't require training every day, if it's not mandatory every day, you will not get the cash flow. You will get just enough money to pay the bills. And by the way, everybody's got that figured out. Everybody on the planet has figured out how to pay their bills. Even people that don't have any money are figuring out how to eat. Everybody agree? So don't be bragging about your bicycles and your two BMWs and your country club that you paid for and the roof over your head and you paid your utilities and your gas. And don't tell me that all oh, somebody else has got it worse than you. Of course somebody else has got it worse than you. I hear this all the time from people. Okay? Somebody gets whacked. They have a bad situation happen. They're like, but I'm grateful. What do you mean you're grateful, man? You found a bankruptcy. I know, but I still got my health. But you don't have your financial health. You shouldn't have gone bankrupt. You should have prepared for it. Don't make sense of the failure, okay? If you're taking notes, quit making sense of the failures. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I've never even watched that video today until now, so that was really awesome. So just to guys to share, share something with you about why you should never make sense of your failures. So today was, um, I actually, so you guys don't know who I am, I actually an active military member, and so we have these things called uh, PT tests, our physical training tests that we have to do every year, at least twice a year if you don't have a great outstanding uh, performance. So I failed my second test in my career of six years. So today, this morning, I was in my service class A's and standing in front of the commander and he said, hey, you've been reprimanded, so we got an NOR. And that wasn't the whole idea about, hey, you know, I could be comfortable and be like, hey, I'm still gonna get paid on the 1st or 15th. You know, I can go back and I can go do another test. So I could never really make sense of the failure because ideally it's my responsibility to put myself in there, not training every single day, like going to the gym every day, I got comfortable because as long as you pass the test, you're good for the rest of the year. And that's what I did, test, good for the rest of the year. So I want you guys to think about that. If you guys aren't training every day, whether it's on your profession, something that you care about, things that help you create more income, you need to be training every single day, especially uh, getting out, being active, at least, at least 30 to 45 minutes a day. All right, guys, without further ado, we got Coach Jerry Feta. He's going to do some training tonight. Come on. Awesome. Thank you, both. Hey, guys, thank you for joining us. So uh, if you're tuning in online, this is a staff training. We're going to stream this live to, A, get in communication with you guys online so you can understand what we do. Uh, we are expanding. We're having our, our, our uh, best year ever, two years in a row now. So 2017 was the best year we ever had. 2018 was the best year we ever had. 2019, we're about to do it again. 
So we're in affluence, we're building a scalable company, we're looking at how do we build out systems, what do people need, and then we're also looking at expanding, we're looking at who, how can we bring on more clients? Okay, how can we bring on more staff? So if you're watching tonight, I have two intentions for you. I'm either gonna recruit you to work for me or you're gonna become a client. One of those two things is gonna happen, but tonight I'm training my team, so I wanna make sure that you see what we do, and we're gonna be training on a program called the Wealth Creation Formula, okay? And if you don't know who I am, real quick, guys, I'm Jerry, I own a company called Wealth Dynamics, and really the program that we're gonna train on tonight, we've put together in partnership with my mentor, Grant Cardone. Uh, we're Grant's number one licensee in the world. Uh, I'm a Grant Cardone certified coach and licensee. And so there's a program that Grant came out with. This was probably uh, Playbook to Millions. When was that? I'm, I'm 2015, blind. 2016? 2016. Uh -huh. So Playbook to Millions came out in 2016. And I remember it like in anticipation, if you haven't seen that program, uh, Grant basically codified how wealth is created. So you went step by step. That's where we get the wealth creation formula emblem. That comes from Playbook to Millions. And so he actually did, it was like a four hour web, webcast uh, and it was basically on wealth creation. And as, as we started going through this training, I started seeing, all right, here's how wealth actually works. Okay, I started seeing like, here's how, like it, it took so much confusion out of the environment for me, but I couldn't figure out like beforehand all the steps and all the steps in order. I knew you had to save, I didn't know when, know when you should save. I knew you had to increase your income. What up, Jose? Hey. I knew that you had to increase your income. I didn't know how to, when to, what you should sell, what you shouldn't sell, when you should quit the one place to go to the other place. I didn't know any of those things. I knew you should invest. I didn't know when you should invest. So we're gonna go through tonight on, on the program we basically created called Playbook to, our Wealth Creation Formula from that program, Playbook to Millions. We took the app, we invested, what's that? You want this off? We'll have this on in a second, okay. actually. Well, we invested uh, uh, probably 30 or 40 grand last year to turn this into an app. And so basically beforehand, Mike can attest to this, we had the idea, we didn't know how to make it like a thing. So we were just using Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel and putting together this plan for people that took all these high level concepts, Grant went over in Playbook to Millions and put it on paper. So last year we invested with uh, uh, Nikos Computer Engineering, their client of mine down in Florida, we dropped about 30, 40 grand, turned it into an app, and now we have it available for our clients. So what I'm gonna do tonight, I'm gonna give, give training to my team. Jose, you'll kinda see how this works too. Um, if you guys are on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube, the app is something we offer completely free. Okay, so we don't charge for it. So if you're watching this tonight and you're like, what's the pitch? The pitch is we want you to get a free version of this. Okay, and I'm gonna have my team drop a link in the comments if you wanna fill it out to get a free app. Uh, it'll actually, we'll build the plan out for you. The only thing we ask in exchange is if we do a good job, you give us referrals. Okay, we know we'll make our money on the back end working with people that like, know, and trust us. And this is our way to build that trust and value with you if you're online, okay? So, guys, when we're going through this, Lexi, do you wanna go to Dropbox? Do you have Dropbox here? Yes. So we're gonna pull up the sample, and I wanna kinda go through this with you guys tonight um, and, and basically like walk through how a delivery is done, how you transition from an audit to a delivery, uh, what all the different numbers and concepts mean. So basically like when we're working with clients, there's, there's four things we're gonna do. Okay, so we're teaching financial knowledge, we're teaching people how to make more money. If that's better, yeah. Is that better for you guys? Yeah, yeah that's way better. So we're teaching financial knowledge, we're gonna teach clients how to make more money, we're gonna teach clients how to keep more of the money they're making, and then we're gonna teach them how to multiply it. But you have to have a central plan. So if there's not a central plan that's focused on that client's purpose, then none of the stuff's gonna happen. Okay, think about, think about like for you know, the stats, like 60% of Americans have less than $1,000 saved. The reason why is they don't have a plan. And they don't have a purpose. There's no reason why they're saving money. They're saving money because their parents told them it was a good idea. Because they were told, save for a rainy day. They're not saving money because they have a grand scheme that they're trying to accomplish and, and saving money is an intricate part of that scheme. Okay, so Lexi, if you go to uh, just the div six file, this is our Dropbox system, guys. Make sure you don't, you don't steal too much of this information. Okay. Now this is just the sales file. All it is is demos. Uh, go into uh, engage or equ equipping, yeah. Uh, sales, demos and write-ups, uh, demo presentations. 
and it's just going to be the wealth creation formula, WCF demo right here. Oh, okay. Yes, click on that, and uh, click on uh, the demo. It's going to be this guy. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is teach you guys how to pitch this. Okay, this really is where I built my business. So when I first started, we like eight years ago, we were with uh, 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 an insurance company, a large insurance agency, and they had a program that was basically a needs analysis, a financial needs analysis. It was also free. So that's kind of where we got the concept. We saw that that worked. Okay, so that was also free, and so we would basically go through. Uh, and we would present with the client, hey, we're gonna sit down with you and help you with your finances, and if we do a good job, will you give us referrals on the back end? And it was a great way to build a business. It was referral-based, there wasn't a lot of marketing costs, anybody could do it, and that's kind of where we saw the concept. And then we'd build the plan out, and it would help people, and they would see on the back end that they needed to make changes. So they'd see, all right, well, I need to pay off my debt, or I need to uh, increase my insurance coverage, my investments aren't gonna perform well, I need to make changes, okay? Now, what happened in that industry is, is as we transitioned out, we left that company, we started AG Capital Group at the time. Independently, we operated uh, our, own, uh, our own firm within a broker. And so we basically could control the process. And when we started getting independent, we started seeing two things. Like advisors or, or agents, they would get caught up in the, in the numbers of the plan and not ever sell anything. Okay, they were just nerds. Basically, they loved the numbers and they were just gonna sit there and, and play with the numbers. And, and the client doesn't love the numbers. So you have to understand, the client does not care. They don't love the numbers. Okay, if they love the numbers, they wouldn't be here. They would already have the numbers figured out. So to sit through a two hour consultation with somebody that's just gonna go over numbers, that's not, that's not attractive for a client. Their eyes are, are gonna glaze over, they're gonna be disengaged if they make a decision it's basically they're shooting themselves in the head to get out of the room because they don't want to continue on droning on with the presentation or with whatever is being shown to them, okay? So that was the thing we, we started seeing first. The second thing we started seeing is that the numbers weren't actually working. So from a client standpoint, we spent all this time on numbers and then the clients either weren't gonna do it or it wasn't gonna work. Meaning all the projections were based on, on average annual returns that weren't actually real. It was just what Wall Street pitched. Or, or we put the plan together and it's based on what's gonna happen at age 60 and the client's 35 and what we decided on mathematically at 35 and for goals at 35 probably aren't gonna be relevant by the time they're 60 and they're never gonna update that. And they're not gonna come back either because they didn't like the first experience. Why would they come back a second time? Okay, so, so basically, most companies, when they do a financial plan, you've got to pay for the plan. You're going to pay anywhere from $500 to maybe two grand just to get a pack out of paper that says, hey, Nano, you should do this. And Nano's going to be like, bro, that's awesome. Let's do it. And they're like, cool, you got to pay us some more money, though. Okay, so think about that. Nano's like, Nano knows, Mike said this, he knew he needed help. Someone's going to be like, all right, well, I'll help you, but let, let me see your wallet first. And... I'm not actually gonna help you, I'm just gonna tell you hypothetically how I would help you if I were to. You're gonna pay me for that, and then I'll help you, and you'll still have to pay me for that too. Okay, so you're gonna pay for a plan that gives you a possibility, it's not even a guarantee, it's a possibility that maybe someday you'll retire. And the plan is gonna be full of irrelevant information. It's gonna be speculative, meaning it's just made up, you're guessing. It's gonna be expensive, and, and, and even if it's free, it's gonna be expensive. When we were doing these for free, we were selling mutual funds. So our hope was that you would come in, do a plan, buy term life insurance from us, because we were cheaper than your current carrier. We'd take the difference, put it into a mutual fund, and then hopefully you had a rollover that we could put into either a, a variable annuity, a fixed annuity, or managed mutual fund. That's what our pitch was eight years ago, okay? And, and the deal was, it was all free. We didn't charge, it's free. The reason it's free is that mutual fund is gonna cost you 28% of your balance over the next 20 years. You don't know about that, you just know it's free. So I'm hoping you'll sign up, right? That's what companies are doing right now. So it's expensive, and then the meetings are arduous, they're pointless, they're long, there's no purpose. Okay, the meeting's actually for the advisor, not the client. Think about the advisor is there getting off on his numbers and himself, not on helping the client. And there's, there, there's certificates on the wall that say, 
I'm a fiduciary, I'm in this for the client, that fiduciary statement is for the advisor too, not for the client. Like all this stuff is, is focused on the industry. So we bypass that with the wealth creation formula. So we're gonna bypass traditional financial planning and we're gonna do it with three different options, okay? So we charge a referral cost. We don't charge a hard cost, we charge a referral cost. So this is either for somebody, A, they don't trust you yet, or B, they're broke. So when you're doing this plan, it's either A, I've got an opportunity with this person, they don't trust me yet, they're not yet gonna pay me money, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower the barrier to entry on the transaction. I'm gonna work for you for free. And if I do a good job, you'll refer me to people. Now on that gradient scale of not working with me to referring me to people means somewhere in the middle we're gonna probably do business. You wouldn't refer me to people if you didn't do business with me. And if you did, you're probably not an ethical person. Like, like think about, yo, Nano, go eat at that restaurant. Dude, you try it? Nah. You should, though. <laughs> you totally should. They asked me to. I said no, but you should eat there. So somewhere between referrals and not doing business is going to be business before the referrals happen. Same in the car business, right, Jose? I'm not going to refer a ride if I didn't buy one. That's right. Okay? So that's what we're thinking here is we know that on the back end, if you agree to the referrals, you're also agreeing that you we're probably gonna do business at some point. Before those referrals happen, I guarantee we're probably gonna close a transaction, or I'm gonna do the work and you're gonna jip me and not pay the referrals, or I'm gonna do the work, you won't buy it from me, and you're gonna sick me on your friends and family without actually ever testing the water. And those are gonna be terrible calls, by the way. Yes. Just know that going into it. Like, oh, you work with Billy? No. How did you get my number? Billy said to call, but you didn't work with Billy? No, Billy wouldn't buy. Click. Okay, so again, you're lowering the barrier to entry on a relationship, meaning they might have half a million dollars or they're gonna do a wealth creation bank or they've got a business and you're trying to get in the door. Guys, I'll work for you for free. I charge nothing, I'll put this plan together for you. I only ask for referrals on the back end and my intention, my intention is to do business with you because of how good of a job I do. Okay, so we're gonna do five referrals. We're gonna do either 10 referrals or we're gonna do 15 referrals. We have basic, we have advanced, we have premier. Okay, so if someone just wants basic, we're gonna give them the wealth creation formula strategy, the very first page showing them the cycle. We're gonna walk them through that and explain how that applies to them. We're gonna give them a real world financial statement. We're gonna give them a protection analysis and we're gonna show them how to pay off their debt. That's it. Okay, we'll, we'll, actually we will give them the action plan. They still will get the action plan. They won't get any of this stuff though. We won't touch their investments. That's only five referrals. Okay, 10 referrals, we're gonna do all of that stuff plus the investments. They just don't get online access. And what that means is if they don't have online access and they do wanna update it, they've gotta come back to me with five referrals again next time or 10 mm -hmm. referrals again next time. If I'm gonna keep redoing it, okay? Now, 15 is the premier meaning they get all of this, plus we give them access to a $40,000 app. We already paid for it. We're not gonna charge them anything. They can access it anytime they want to, update the numbers in real time, okay? So that's basically the pitch. And, and so anybody that signs up for this, they're either gonna do it again because they don't have the money, or we're gonna help them with that, or they don't yet trust you and they're willing to, to see if it's gonna work. So you're basically turning a no into a maybe. Okay, next page, Lexi. And then on the back end, again, your hope, your, your intention is to sell products. Okay, on the back end, you're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna help you do the plan. The plan is gonna be your financial report card. We're gonna identify some problems on that report card. And my intention is I'm gonna have products and services that solve those problems for you. And you'll be interested, and that's why you wanna buy them. You don't have to, I'm not gonna make you. At the end of the day, it's your choice, but I'm hoping that I can either help you increase your income, I can help you put an estate plan in place, I can help you save more money, I can help you protect your money against currency devaluation by owning gold and silver, I can help you roll over a retirement plan into a self-directed account, I can help you with private placement investments, real estate deals, private lending, I can help you blow up your business, I can help you get into the accredited status with your investments, or I can help you build out an actual system to run an international or a national company. All the way up the top, okay? My goal is to help you become first a millionaire, 
Okay, you're gonna go from level one to level two. Level two private placements, you've gotta be a millionaire to invest in, so my goal is to get you there. And then after that, my goal is to get you financially free. 10 million is the milestone, that's the number we need you to get to, that's proven by the top 1%. From there on, we go as far as you wanna go. But we gotta start here first. We're gonna start at the very bottom and work our way up the chart, okay? So those are the services we're gonna offer. Now the benefit on this, guys, is for you guys as salespeople, literally anything somebody needs you can help with. There's not a reason someone shouldn't do business with you. You can even do free. The wealth creation formula is free. So if they can't afford a $5 wristband, how about free? If they can't do a $30 book, how about free? If they've got half a million dollars they wanna roll over and they're not ready yet, that's fine, don't do it yet, how about free? So there's no reason you shouldn't work with someone unless they're just totally unwilling. But if they're able and willing, they're usually gonna do something with you. And this just goes back to knowing your inventory. Okay, knowing your inventory. This, and this is why like, I don't do like, like other, other businesses that don't have inventory because I don't wanna just be like, hey, can you, can you sell a house? No, okay, sorry, I can't help you. Not that there's anything wrong, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's, 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 that's a one, it's a hammer and a nail. It's one thing. Okay, I don't wanna just be like, hey, do you need a phone? No, okay, sorry, wait till you come back and you're ready next. I wanna figure out a way to create, well, what do you need and how can I use any single one of my products to solve that problem? Does that make sense? So these fit in in special places at different times. Not everyone is gonna buy all of this at once. Some people might just buy that. And they're here for a while. And when their income gets up, they're gonna do that next. And then they're gonna realize, oh man, I got enough income, I need to maybe get a will. They might jump backwards. And then they might jump forward. They might spend a little bit of time down here. Once they're up here, they're usually just going straight up. When they're investing with you at that point, they might repeat some of this stuff, but they're focused on the next target. How do I get from level one investing to level two investing? That's a net worth game. That's gonna require the sacred account. You can't build your net worth if you didn't save money first. Okay, so that's what we're doing on the back end. Next slide. So the basic plan, as you're going through this, guys, the basic plan and the advanced and the premium all offer this. Okay, now this just looks like a chart, but when you break the chart down properly, it actually gives people a lot of clarity on what they need to do financially. When I first saw this, I actually printed it and put it everywhere that I would see it. That's how much clarity it brought me. The reason why is I was, I was doing all of these all at the same time and not doing good at any of them. Okay, like typical Alaskan, I wanna invest. Dude, you don't have any income. What are you gonna invest? I wanna invest, you don't have anything saved, bro. What are you gonna invest? There's nothing in your bank right now. You couldn't invest. You need to go back to your income. This is the one that, that the middle class won't confront. Increase the income. That's the one I wouldn't confront. Because I wouldn't confront it, I would go all the way back here all the time. I would quit things. I would be like, man, I'm, I'm burnt out or I'm bored or I'm tired. So I'm gonna quit and go to another company. I'm gonna quit and go to another agency. I'm gonna quit and try a different business. I can't tell you guys how many times I did that. Okay, or, or I'm bored so I'm gonna bring on a partner. Worst mistake I ever made, I'm bored so I'm gonna bring on a partner. That's a terrible idea. It's because I didn't understand this. I'm not done increasing my income yet. I didn't have enough money saved, okay? So, so basically, you're starting here with wealth. And the story you wanna talk about with your client is purpose. Before wealth comes purpose. Why would you wanna be wealthy? What would be the motivation? So what are some of the things we hear like from clients when you're like, hey, what's the purpose? Why, why do they wanna be wealthy in the first place? Financially free. They wanna be financially free so they can do what? Travel. Uh, travel. Travel, family. That's, that's a huge one, family. 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 Okay, what else? A help community. Help their community. Help their family and friends. Help their family and friends. And what are some other things? Legacy. Donate to charity. Donate to charity. Donate to their religion. Freedom of, of time. Freedom of time. Do whatever they want. Maybe there's maybe stuff they don't know they want to do yet, and they just want to have the opportunity to be able to do those things if they came up. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are all great things. So I want you guys to realize that this is what we're helping people do. I haven't heard yet. Actually, there's one guy. I was like, hey, what are you gonna do if you become wealthy? He's like, I'm, a, I'm gonna start a strip club. I didn't work with him. <laughs> okay, that's the only guy I've ever heard somebody say something something bad when I ask them, what will you do when you're wealthy? No one has ever like, I'm gonna poison children or, or I'm gonna start a, a strip club. It's always good stuff. And, and that's what you wanna focus on, okay? Now, wealth, immediately when people think wealth, which one of these do they usually go to immediately? Invest. Invest. 
Wealth, they think investing. I need to have investments. Why? Because Warren Buffett. They don't know why. Investing means to clothe your capital. At an etymology, the root of invest means to clothe your capital. Okay, so, so when you think about clothing, I'm dressed pretty sharp today, right guys? Yep. The reason I'm wearing this is because I understand it, I like it, and it's appropriate for what I'm gonna be doing. Those are the three reasons you, un you invest in something. You understand the thing, you like the thing, and it's appropriate for what you're going to be doing. Okay, how many people understand their 401k? Like, how many people, when you pull up the statement, they get frustrated? They don't even like the 401k. They don't even look at it. They're okay. like, no, Mike, don't even show me. Don't even show me. <laughs> how, many people, how many people understand that their 401k is or isn't appropriate for what they're going to be doing? They don't, know. they don't know. They're on the Fidelity website, and it says, this is how much income you're going to have, and they're like, seven grand. I think that's enough. My that's employer matches. Yeah. My, my employer <laughs> matches. If they have to pay you to do it, it's probably not a good idea. Think about that. The IRS and the employer are going to pay you to do it. Not a good idea. Okay, so investing to clothe your capital. Just like when you wear clothes, do I like it? Do I understand it? And is it appropriate for what I'm going to be doing? Okay, now, in order to invest to clothe your capital, you would have had to have capital to clothe in the first place. Okay, so that means you had to have saved, which means that wealth doesn't come from investing immediately. It comes first from saving. Okay, saving, you're setting aside. Okay, in order to save, before you could clothe the capital, you had to be able to clothe yourself, huh? So maybe you gotta pay the bills, boy. Like, I gotta have some money left over to save so I'm not naked, then I can save some money and clothe that money next. Simple, right? So you gotta save first, you're gonna save by having margin, which means you increase the income enough past you were being clothed to where you could have some capital left over called cash flow and clothe that cash flow with investments later on. Okay? Now, investing, I, sh I showed a guy a, a, a deal the other day. It's like 20 grand. 20 grand, and it was like an 8.5% deal. I was like, hey, dude, do you wanna do this deal? He's like, yeah. And then he saw the, the cash flow, and it was like 150 bucks. He's like, that didn't seem like a lot. The reason why, baby money creates more baby money. If you invest too soon, you won't make anything. Does not matter what amount you start with. One dollar at 12% is still pennies on the dollar. 20 grand at 8.5% is still 150 bucks. It doesn't matter if it's a mutual fund or if it's in real estate, it's not gonna make you very much money. So you have to think about monetary velocity. Monetary velocity, how quickly does the money move? If the money doesn't move quickly and you need it to move quickly, then it's not a good investment. Somebody that looks at it and said, dude, that's not very much money means that they don't have enough money yet, which means they shouldn't invest yet. It's not appropriate for what they're gonna be doing with it. Whatever they're gonna be doing with the money caused them to think that's not very much money. You guys tracking? Mm -hmm. so, if some, more time? So, so, so if somebody looks at the cash flow on the deal and they're like, that's not very much, that means that, that either A, it isn't very much, in this case it was, it's a decent cash flow goal, right? Eight and a half percent, but that would mean that that person's not ready to invest in that deal yet because it's not appropriate for what they're gonna be doing. Whatever they thought they're gonna be doing, they're looking at 150 bucks saying that's not gonna cut it. You know? So what if you look at, and you do understand the percentage on your money, and you do, although it may not seem like a huge amount, but you should never say it is just 150. That was 150 that I didn't have it, but rather you look at it, that's an additional cash flow of income, I'll continue doing what I'm doing and I'll continue stacking it up. Right. Because, is, I mean, is that valid even if it's yeah. like 20 grand? If, and that would be the mindset of this appropriate for what I'm doing. So Nano's saying, all right, well, it's only 150, but I don't need it right now. It's cash flow and I'm building something up. So Nano is going to be building. So the, the 150 is appropriate for that because he knows where it's going and he knows it's not going to always be 150. Someone that's like, man, 150, that's, that's just immediately the wrong answer. That means that they're probably not going the same place. They're gonna do something else and whatever that money is doing for them isn't gonna do what they need it to. So that's a good point, Nano. But if somebody's not in a position to invest yet, that's why we have a sacred account. Okay, now, now if they're not investing in this yet, until they can save, this is the part that I missed, until they can save 40% of their income, 100% of their surplus should go back into themselves until they're, back, they're, they're able to earn enough income to save 40%. 
meaning you should not save for a rainy day, you should not save for a fourplex, you should not save for anything if you're not saving 40% of your income. The only thing you save for is the next deal I'm gonna put back into me, cost 10 grand, I'm not there yet, so I'm gonna save up till I'm there and invest the entire 10 grand in myself. Okay, that's how the wealthy did it. Like if you look at, at the top 1%, they didn't sit there setting aside pennies, they took whatever, they like they did save, but it didn't stay there. And if they weren't at that 40%, then they didn't keep the money they saved. They looked at how can I invest this back into ultimately my ability to sell so that I can increase my income so that I can save 40% so that I could put enough money aside to do a deal and actually make something out of the deal. Okay, now, now this isn't reported and this isn't taught and this isn't talked about because this makes banks pointless, it makes financial advisors pointless, it makes Wall Street pointless, it makes, it makes residential real estate investing pointless most of the ways that that big corporations and, and and companies make money on consumers become null and void because of the 40 percent rule that's why it's not top okay but we watched that that uh, men who built america who realized every single one of those guys was a salesperson first yeah. mm -hmm. every single one of them started as a salesperson now they didn't even all start as business owners carnegie didn't he worked for a guy but he was that guy's number one salesperson. So think about that. Carnegie wasn't like, how do I buy an FHA fourplex? Carnegie was like, how do I make my company more money first? I'll freaking rent, I'll sleep in a train if I have to. Whatever I gotta do, I'll sleep at the office, but I'm gonna figure out how to increase the income through sales. So, so you go through the cycle, right? And that gives people clarity. Like I didn't even get into the plan yet. This is just the front cover. Is that worth five referrals? Hell yeah. There are five people in your world that should know about what I just taught you. These are called tie downs, guys. When you're doing the, the demo, when you're when you're going through this, this is the kind of stuff you should be saying and asking. By the way, by the way, Mike, I've got an affiliate program. You're gonna tell me to go see five people and I'm gonna help them. If you came with me and you got paid, would you be interested in that? Oh yeah. You just got a new teammate. That's, that's, the, that's the scripting. So you go through multiple flows of income, increase those flows, you're gonna save the money from those flows, and then you're gonna invest into a bigger deal, okay? The deals that people think they're gonna get rich on on this stage don't actually happen until here or here. So if someone made the first investment, I talked to a guy the other day, he's like, yeah, dude, I own 10 units, negative cash flow, two grand a month. Shit. And he's like, I'm, I'm terrified, it doesn't pay me, like I hate it, I need to get my debt taken care of, I need to get the, the loans down on those things. He understands it was a bad idea, and he even can, like he's a, a real life story of someone that tried to do this when they weren't ready and, and they should have waited till here and now he's suffering the consequence of paying the price because he didn't do that at the right time. Just that front cover would save that person $24,000 this year. Or, Think about that. Or even going through the formula more than one time to, you know, necessarily have to, uh, let's say you get two deals that cash flow 150, having to wait until like you're just stacking it up. Yeah. If you start too early, that's a great point, Nano. So if Nano's like, hey, I've got 50 grand, enough to put into my reserves and my down payment on my fourplex, but I'm only gonna cash flow $90 a month on it. Well, how long is it gonna take Nano to save that 50 grand back when he's only got $90 a month coming in now? Monetary velocity, Nano just killed the speed of his next deal because he went in too early on this one. Okay, so that's, that's something you gotta consider. So. When you're going through this formula, that's the first thing we're covering for people. And check this out, every single one of our products solves a problem here. Create income, you don't have an income source, come work for Wealth Dynamics. Don't need a job or an opportunity, you just wanna increase the income, get on Wealth Dynamics University. Need to save money, set up a state grant account or buy bullion. Ready to invest? Look at one of our standard asset deals. Okay, well, passive income, that's gonna do that. You increase the flow, stick it back into your life insurance, do the next deal, and just keep on repeating. We service every single piece of this cycle for people. We build this intentionally. Like, there was only one client I ever talked to where they're like, dude, you handle every single one of those steps. Of course I do, why do you think we built it? I'm gonna hit every part of the transaction to help people. Next page. So that's the explanation there. Now, this next one, this is the financial statement. Now, <clears throat> most financial statements, are only gonna be your cash flow and your balance sheet. Our financial statement is totally different. So we're looking at, obviously, their cash flow, okay? We wanna show them their gross income. Their gross income. What is the gross income, Nano? 
is the overall that they get before taxes are taken out? Before taxes, why do we show them that number? To confront what actually the IRS is actually uh, taking out, which is probably one of the biggest expenses that the people do have and may not know how to, uh, how to deal with it and uh, raise the responsibility level that if they did learn or increase their knowledge in their area, that could be additional income that they could get to keep. Yeah, exactly it. So, so people, when you ask them, Mike, and you're like, how much income? They'll usually say, oh, in my, I, I, get, I get $500 every two weeks in my bank. They'll tell you the net, and they'll even describe it as the net because they don't know what their gross is. Like, think about that. You got paid this much, and you don't even know it because you only look at what showed up in your account, yet there's probably another 25% you did make that you don't know about because you're not looking at it. So we show them the gross first. We show them any other income they're making, uh, real estate net operating income. The net operating income is gonna be the actual net on the deal, okay, before their debt expenses. The reason why is we're gonna have that covered inside the plan. We're gonna have their PFD income. In Alaska, people get permanent fund dividends. The government bribes you to live here. And people act like they never got the income. They're like, oh, that's just my Disney World income. We don't count that. Dude, tell that to your kids when they're paying for your nursing home when you're 60 because you didn't save enough money. We're gonna count that money. Technically, that's passive. Nano's like, it's not passive. You gotta live here. <laughs> I don't even have it. So, so that's gonna be basically their gross, right? So we're looking at their gross income, and then we're looking at on their expenses. We're gonna go through an actual expense report with them. We're gonna go out their total expenses, and then we're gonna show, do they have a surplus or a shortfall? On a month-to-month -month basis, are you positive cash flow or are you negative cash flow? Okay, every single client we work with, we treat them like a business. Unemotional, it's either you're either making money or you're not. At the end of the month, you're making money or you're, you're losing money, right? So anytime you look at the expenses and the, the surplus, I always like to check with people and ask them, does that look accurate? Is that what you're seeing left over in your bank every month? If it shows me a, a, a $1,000, and I've been doing this almost a decade, so I know people lie like crazy on this, and the number one, the, the number one that they lie, lie on is fast food. 100%, I don't spend anything on fast food. And then the second appointment, they're like, oh, we do go, we do go to Taco Bell three times a week. We spend $300 a month on tacos. So you wanna go back through, does this look accurate? Is that, are you guys seeing that you're short? Where does this money go? Is this going on a credit card? Are you borrowing it from somebody? You don't just have negative 4,000 and nothing happens. So where is that money going? Where is it coming from, okay? So you're hitting all this, then you're going through their assets and liabilities. Assets, traditional investments. This is any like bank, uh, uh, Wall Street uh, retirement plans, any traditional stuff. Uh, bank accounts, okay, HSAs, savings plans. Um, you know, real estate, their real estate values, not their primary residence, just their real estate values if it's an investment property. The net value of their business. We actually have software that runs business valuations. That's something we'll do for a client for free on this. It's gonna be something that if they go to an attorney, they're gonna pay two grand for. Go to any attorney in town and be like, hey, I want you to do a business valuation. They're gonna ask you for two grand. Okay, we do that for free. We're gonna literally go through and figure out what's the business worth. We have software that does it. It's through most of our life insurance carriers have some form of calculator for that. The reason why is we, we offer key man insurance. They need to know how much the business is worth if we offer that insurance. So we have access to that calculator. And then anything else, cash value, bonds, etc. We're gonna total all that up in assets. Okay, now notice what wasn't in there. Personal property and their primary residence. Those are not assets. All the stuff that they brag about that they own is not actually worth anything. My home's almost paid off. That's not worth anything. You I live there. I own my car. I own my car outright. We have a snow machine. That's a liability. <laughs> if it, down, it goes down in value. That's personal property. That does not go in your assets. Okay, so that's going to be stuff. And the liabilities, that's gonna be uh, credit card debt, car loans, student loans, other debt, personal loans, home mortgages, investment mortgages, okay? Now, when you're doing real estate, like real estate investing, you wanna realize that the mortgage balance is gonna go on, on their actual balance sheet, on their net worth. The mortgage debt, though, is not gonna go on their expenses. The property should cover that. So if it doesn't, that's negative cash flow. So the mortgage balance is gonna go on their balance sheet. So let's say they have 
uh, you know, three quarters of a million dollars in, in mortgages on investment properties, if they couldn't pay, they're responsible to pay that balance off. In a worst case scenario, so they're responsible for the balance that shows up on their net worth. Now, the, the real estate, the debt, that's not a personal debt, the property should pay the debt. So the debt's not gonna go on their personal expenses, we're just only gonna include the surplus cash flow. Okay, so we're gonna go again, net operating income minus the mortgage debt payments equals the cash flow. And on the income for passive, we're only putting their cash flow, so it's NOI minus debt. Okay, so, so, so like you shouldn't see a giant debt category because of their investment mortgage payment, because that's not something they pay, it's something that gets taken out of the income before they're allowed to include the income. Does that make sense? So that's their financial statement. We're gonna put that together, show them their net worth. Okay, their net worth is, is basically what, what the SEC is gonna look at. It doesn't include their primary residence. It's based only on actual assets. What is SEC? The Securities Exchange Commission. So if they were like, hey, if, if they, they were like, hey, I'm accredited, the SEC is gonna say, great, show us your net worth minus your primary residence. And if it's not a million dollars, minus your primary residence, you're not accredited. So we're basing the net worth off what it actually takes to play ball, not what their realtor said or what their mortgage broker said. No. So that's basically the, the balance sheet. Now the actual analysis here, so you got savings rate, that's the percentage of their gross income that gets saved every month. You've got passive income, uh, or you've got uh, passive income ratio, this is the passive uh, total income rate. You've got housing expenses, this is how much of your expenses go towards housing. Um, you've got personal rate of return, Personal rate of return is more important than net worth. That's how much assets, or how much income, passive income is being generated by your assets. Okay, to make it easy, let's say they got 100 grand in assets, $6,000 a year in passive income. 6,000 divided by 100,000 is 6%. Their personal rate of return is 6%. Okay, that's actually more important than net worth. That shows how productive are your assets. Okay, I don't care that you have assets, I, I care about cash flow. Assets I've got to sell. So if I got to sell it, it's not really an asset because I can't own it for it to actually help me. I've got to get rid of it. So I want cash flow. Taxes, we can show their net effective tax rate. Again, if they're paying too much in taxes, like Nano said, talk to them about the W-4. Talk to them about write-offs. Talk about, talk about the things they need to do to decrease the taxes. Then you get the wealth determiner, which is how much passive income do you have in comparison to your expenses. Mike? So when I get to the W-4 and I go through those four steps on how to increase your income, I always run into this thing where, I mean, obviously they get into their into themselves mode. Oh, I, you know, I don't want to do anything that's illegal when it comes to changing my taxes because they get they get so scared and worried about cheating the IRS when it's really not. Like, how do you how do you handle that? Agree. I'm not gonna do anything either illegal either, bro. I don't know what you had in mind. I was just gonna show you how to how to make sure you didn't get too much taken out on your paycheck. Okay, the easy, and the easy way for them to, to calculate is if they go on an online calculator for taxes, you can literally type in federal income tax calculator. You can find out if they take a standard deduction based on their income, how much should be coming out of taxes. Compare that against how much is. At every paycheck, they can increase their W-4 uh, exemptions until they have exactly the dollar amount coming out that should be. Then they owe nothing and they get nothing. Now, if you're aggressive like me, I'm gonna crank it to nine. I'm gonna have no taxes taken out of my paycheck and I'll go ahead and owe the IRS at the end of the year because that's what they're gonna do to me if I don't do it first. I'll go make money with the money and then I'll pay them back later. So that's that's really like like the, the what this is the indicator though. If they're, if they're net effective tax bracket, I would say if it's more than like 25%, regardless of their income, you need to have them start talking about like how they can decrease their taxes, okay? Um, Passive income over expenses. Oh, and by the way, guys, if you're on Facebook, we have not found someone that's great for taxes yet. Um, so you got you, three things you need to be able to do. You need to be able to understand a client is a business, not an individual. You need to believe taxation is theft, and you need to be on our side, not the IRS's side. Okay, so if you're a tax person watching this, we want you to talk to us. We're looking for someone to send clients to, and if you can check those three boxes, we would love to send you all of the business we can. Uh, including my personal business because we haven't found someone great yet. That's just a side note. Uh, debt to asset ratio is next. So guys, this one is on there because it needs to be, but it's not something they should focus on. And the reason why is this is measuring how much debt do they have in comparison to assets. 
So ultimately, when they have a total portfolio and a legacy to pass on or an estate to pass on, their debt to asset ratio should be lower than 5%. Meaning for every $1 of debt they have, there's only five cents of, of or for every $1 of assets they have, there's only $5 of debt. Now, they're not gonna get wealthy by lowering this ratio. They can pay off their debt all day long and they will not be wealthy. They only have no debt. So this is where you gotta show them, guys, you, know, you want the number there to know about it and you wanna know what the correct range is, but the reality is I'm probably gonna tell you to get more debt. Yep. At some point, you're gonna go invest in real estate and I'm gonna tell you to go take out several millions of dollars in real estate loans to do that. Your debt to asset ratio will actually increase, not decrease. Now we're gonna do it the right way because we're focused on the personal rate of return, which it equals cash flow, meaning that that debt will pay itself off down and off over time. The longer I own that real estate, the less I actually owe on it, and it pays itself off eventually. Okay, so that's gonna be the debt to asset ratio. Primary residence to asset ratio, this is another one, okay? So their primary residence to asset ratio is more than 10%, they need to increase their assets or get rid of the home. Unemotional, the less educated the client is, the more attached they're gonna be to the home. The more educated the client is, the less attached they're gonna be and they'll get rid of it. Or they'll at least do like a home equity line of credit or refi, a cash out refi to get the equity. And, and by the way, from a networking standpoint, if you can find a go-to for HELOCs, that's a great way for you to pass some business to another local professional, somebody that can do a HELOC for your client. When you see this and you're like, guys, you've got a hundred grand in equity that we could put into a deal, you just need to get it out of the home, find somebody that's gonna help them do that, okay? So that's gonna be your primary residence to asset ratio. Uh, another thing too is just straight up tell them to list the property. Like send their information to Matt Lindsay and, and to Derek and them basically say, hey guys, this is my client. He's got 300 grand in home equity. He wants to get out of the home altogether. We don't wanna do a HELOC. They're gonna do something else instead. We just need you to help them sell as soon as possible. Okay, and that comes back to you as a sale. That client now has equity because they sold the home. They've got money that they're gonna come to you now and invest. So it's a circle, you gotta have these people connected. That's why we work so much with Matt. We know Matt's gonna sell it faster than anybody, okay? Uh, you've got uh, uh, your tax, your income bracket. This measures their total income versus the top 1% of wealth. And so basically to be in the top 1%, a person needs to make 37,270 a month in modified adjusted gross income. And so you're gonna compare their income against that. And this is gonna be one of the main numbers you focus on. Lastly is average uh, uh, income streams for the millionaire is seven. So you're gonna measure them against that number. They got two out of seven, they got three out of seven, whatever the digits is, this one says two. Is this a new one? It's, it's actually the old format. Okay, got it. Yeah, really same ratio, it's just a different order. It threw me off at first too. So basically, this is one that when you go to the first page we looked at, when they add more streams, that's increased income or increased streams. Those new streams should not take any attention off the current stream. Okay, they, the two streams should actually strengthen each other. Symbiotic, a mistake people make is they say, well, the second stream should strengthen the first. No, the second stream should strengthen the first and the first stream should also strengthen the second. They should both do it. Okay, so when you do one, it actually boosts the other one. When you do the other one, it boosts the first one. That's a real flow. Like, and anyone that doesn't do that, they're gonna create dev T. They're gonna pull away from that stream. They're gonna be distracted. They're gonna have all these deviations they gotta go through. And it basically causes them to slow down. They can't earn enough income fast enough because they're playing too many people. Like, think about a, key, a piano. If it's about speed, you want the keys all together. You don't wanna be spread over here like that and reaching across. You wanna just mash the ones right in front of you. That's how the income goes. Okay, so this is just the financial statement. Again, five referrals. For five referrals, you get the first page and you get the second page. So you said you had five people that liked the first page. You think you had another five that would like the second? Okay, there's our 10. So that not, we're at least gonna do the advanced plan tonight. Next page. So next is gonna be the protection analysis. And we won't be able to get through this whole thing tonight, guys, but protection analysis, think about that. We just spent an hour on two pages. <laughs> protection analysis, this will co cover their insurance. I do wanna hit our life insurance calculator really quick. 
So on the insurances, guys, we offer life insurance, we offer ID theft insurance, we offer estate insurance. We don't sell any of the other types of insurances. We used to sell health, we don't sell it anymore. The reason why, I don't want you calling me when you have a toothache. That's not what I do. Other people help with that, that's not what Wealth Dynamics does. Okay, insurance brokers do that. We used to sell disability, we don't sell that anymore. We used to sell long-term care, we don't sell that anymore. Okay, we only sell things that help you accumulate wealth. Okay, we don't sell auto and home, we don't sell personal liability, we will never get into those businesses. Okay, I don't need Nano being like, Jerry, I got in a car wreck. Like, I, I don't need to know about that, dude. Like, I'll send you a get well suit card, but I'm not gonna, I can't do anything for you there. Okay, so, and on the life insurance, we do offer that because it is the banking system we use. Okay, wealth creation banking is life insurance. Okay, so when we calculate their life insurance needs, I wanna show you guys how we calculate them. So the debt, the debt benefits, right? The debt should be paid off. Any and all debt that they have should be paid off, okay? The income should be replaced. Now traditional life insurance will say how much income do you need and for how many years. So let's say you said I want you know five grand a month and I want that for, for 20 years, it's gonna calculate out whatever lump sum you would need and include that as part of the death benefit. The problem is that's winning the lottery. You're actually doing that family a disservice. They're gonna get 500 grand and have no idea what to do with it and either live terrified hanging on to it or they're gonna go blow it. Okay, so what we do is we calculate it based on this. How much income would you need to replace because you are your greatest asset for your family? How much income would you need to replace if you died? And how much real estate would you need to own in order to replace that income? Your death benefit is a down payment for that real estate. So we assume a 12% cash on cash return, meaning if you divided that, that annual income by 12%, it would tell you how much their down payment is. If you multiplied that down payment by four, it would tell you how much property they needed to buy. So if they had a trust, that life insurance pays out to their trust and it literally tells the kids and the wife or the husband, you cannot do anything other than buy real estate with this. Go talk to Michael Carrigan. Now Mike can make sure that this goes and does what, what, what the dad set it up to do in the first place. Okay, so that's how it's set. So it's gonna buy real estate, replace the income, it's gonna pay off their current mortgage, and it's gonna cover other expenses. That's gonna be burial expenses, and that's gonna be college expenses. Okay, on the college expenses on the input, always ask them if they want to do that part. Don't ask them if they wanna do any of the other stuff. The other stuff is Mando. They're gonna, it's gonna pay off the debt, whether they want it to or not, I'm gonna click that button. It's gonna replace their income, whether they want it to or not, I'm gonna click that button too. It's gonna pay for them to get put in a box and buried, whether they, whether they want that or not, their family will. So I'm gonna click that button. But on the college, and the reason why, is we don't even know if college is gonna be around in 20 years. That system is so jacked up, like, like do you want your kids to go? Yes, okay, do you wanna pay some extra money today to make sure they can go? Most people are gonna tell you no. We're not trying to sell big face amounts. Most insurance companies are, so they want you to check all the boxes because they want a giant death benefit because it equates to more premium. Since we don't sell traditional life insurance, we sell it as a saving strategy. We actually want less money going to death benefit, more money going to cash value, and a giant college expense doesn't help us accomplish that. So you wanna make sure they understand. Now this is gonna show their total needs based on this, and then it also calculates what do they currently have. Now when they currently have protection, if it's group, we don't count it. When they leave their employer, that insurance will not come with them. Okay, if it's Sigley or Vigley, when they leave the military, they will get screwed. Their rates will just skyrocket. So if they've got Sigley or Vigley, we tell them, Soldiers group life, veterans group, group life, yeah, it's cool today, but in 10 years, you won't like it anymore. So let's go ahead and cancel it now. Now, now one, one word of wisdom, never cancel a policy. And Lexi will catch you on this, like you won't ever be the one canceling the policy. Never cancel a policy till a new one is in place. Okay, so make sure they're covered by our new policy before we get rid of the old policy. On the old policy, you might have to do some follow-up. Just to let you know, like, like there's a, a New York Life does this to us all the freaking time. It's a business preservation tactic. You'll replace the policy and you'll turn in the policy replacement sheet. Lexi will send it over to New York Life and they'll tell the client that they got it and then not cancel the policy and keep charging them for a year. And then tell the client when the client calls that it was your fault. Oh, Mike was supposed to do that. 
and that's how they get Mike in trouble and they keep the business. Okay, so just know that up the front, like you're not dealing with ethical people here. So you're dealing with, with competitors that aren't gonna appreciate that you do a better job than them. We're never gonna badmouth them. We will recognize that's something they do. So you might have to coach the client. Hey, we're taking business away from a billion dollar corporation. They're not gonna make it super easy. Don't worry, I'm gonna do all the work, but we might have to submit this thing a couple of times and I might need you to get on a call with them. And by the way, let's go ahead and get you legal shield just in case anything comes up. We can actually have some rights here nipped it in the butt, it's done, okay? So that's gonna be everything on the, actually one more page, Lexi. Then the debt analysis. So this is gonna be everything included on the basic plan. Insurance analysis, the debt analysis, the financial statement, the wealth creation formula. Now the debt analysis is showing all the current ways they pay their debt now. I call it the shotgun method. They throw a little bit of extra money at everything and then they usually attack the one that has the highest interest rate because it looks the scariest. Okay, or, or they attack the one with the biggest balance because they're like, that's the biggest amount. I need to climb that now. That's why people pay their house down. So we do it differently. We tell them actually align your debt just like Uncle Dave says. Smallest balance to largest balance. Now, <laughs> unlike what Uncle Dave says, you're going to use whole life insurance to pay the debt off sooner. Okay, the reason being is when you do it Uncle Dave's way, you snowball it, you're gonna be broke. Let's get that real clear. You're gonna take all your money and you're gonna pay off your debt as soon as you possibly can, and you're gonna come out of debt and have nothing left in savings, and, and anyone should know, why did you get into debt in the first place? No savings. So if you come out of debt with no savings, what is gonna happen immediately? Something comes up, you go right back into debt. It's an endless cycle, okay? So, so what we're saying is you're gonna actually pay minimums on everything, maximize your cash flow, and stick that into a whole life insurance policy. With a high structured cash value, as soon as your cash value is as big as your smallest balance, you're gonna borrow from the cash value and pay off that loan. Whatever the payment used to be, you'll now pay towards your loan on your cash value to repay yourself. Now you got two streams you gotta pay attention here. You're repaying the loan, but also you're still doing normal saving in the front end. So you're gonna accumulate a balance again pretty soon to borrow against, again, and pay off the next one. At which point, you'll have that balance, or that payment, sorry, and that, that payment there, you have now more cash flow freed up to pay off the loan early, plus you're continuing to still save. You do that again, and you do that again, and you do that again, and what happens is you pay off the debt early, you save a bunch of money in interest, you just freed up $1,900 a month in cash flow, and you still have 10, 15, 20 grand in savings. The reason being, the life insurance grows even when you take the money out. Imagine going to a bank and you pulled the money out, and when you went to go put more money in, they actually paid you interest like you never took out your money. That'd be pretty sick, right? That's actually how the life insurance works. So when they pay off their debt, Let's say it does take them uh, till 2022. Let's say it does take them three years. Imagine having three years worth of accumulated interest on money that never was actually in the account. Meaning when you finally deposited it all back into the account, you had an extra five grand there that wouldn't have been there anyways. Okay, I don't wanna get off too much of a tangent here, but so, so I went through a, a plan with a lady tonight. She has a solo 401k and this is getting into the weeds with investing. She had a solo 401k, about, uh, about 30 grand in it. And I showed her if you invested the 30 grand at 10% by itself, that 30 will turn into 90 over the next 15 years. Not a bad deal, 30 into 90 over, over 15 years, it'll triple. If you invest it into the note, but first you tag it to your life insurance account, that 30 will turn into 145,000 over the same 15 years. No extra money spent, all we did was we added life insurance to the equation. Think about that. So that, that's what you're teaching people to do with their debt, okay? So all of the, all the pages we covered tonight, those are included in just the basic plan. Just the basic plan, five referrals. This, and if you're doing just the basic, you probably are working with someone who's probably broke right now. Okay, and realize, realize two things. A, if they're broke right now, it means they have a spending problem, which means that it's not that they're not a buyer, it means that they habitually overspend. Get them to habitually overspend with you instead on the sacred account. It'll be good for them. They'll have money put away. Get them to habitually overspend on Wealth Dynamics U. It's gonna actually increase their income. 
that's your mindset that you gotta have. Otherwise, they're gonna go do it on Wendy's, they're gonna go do it on movies, they're gonna do it on Netflix, they're gonna do it on whatever they're gonna do it on and it won't produce anything for that individual, okay? The second thing is, probably no one's gonna help this person. At the end of the day, there's probably nobody that's gonna stop and for free help this person put these numbers together. Okay, now I, when I'm working with, with somebody that's in that position, I make sure they know what I'm doing for them. I make sure they understand, I'm not charging you for this. I'm gonna do this for free. I care about you, I wanna see you do well, I'm gonna put this together for you. So that way they don't try and burn me. Okay, and that's happened to me before. It's gonna happen, it's, it's a numbers game, it'll happen at various times, but the way you keep somebody's ethics in so that you don't over exchange and cause them to be unethical is you let them know what you're doing for them. They're not entitled to a deal, they're not entitled to free, I'm, I'm volunteering that. I wanna see you do well, and, and I expect if I can help you do well, let's do some business as a result. And let's refer me to some people so I can help them do well too. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up here for tonight. Um, any questions you guys have? <clears throat> I have a question, so go, this is not referring to this in itself, this is going back. You said a house is not an asset. Could it become an asset if it was paying you in some shape or form? Let's say that you have a six bedroom house, you rent it out, half of it and your mortgage thousand bucks but it actually pays you two thousand because of the renders could that be an asset if you can get a cash flow correct yeah okay now it's still single family correct. meaning if that guy moves out you're done you're done yeah, yeah. No, but but that's a good way to turn something from a liability to an asset is yes. get a, a tenant in there so an asset is something that pays you a liability something that takes away from you right okay. yeah but you still not be recognized by the SCMP SNC. Yeah, the SEC, if, you, if you're trying to get accredited, they would still say, no, you live there, so it doesn't count. Okay. Yeah. So we would let it slide, but the SEC wouldn't when it came time to play ball. Okay. Yeah. Good question. What, what other questions do you guys have today? You know, why do you want to become an accredited investor? That's, that's where the deals are at, man. <laughs> I literally had a client tell me today, he's like, I want to invest with you, but I already know all the deals that you offer me that I would want to do, I can't do because I'm not accredited yet. So so that's a that's a real thing, that's a real milestone, like the federal government does restrict the middle class from even knowing about investments. So like as, as somebody that does private placements, I can get sued, fined, and put in prison if I advertise these types of investments to people that aren't accredited. That's how much trouble I can get in, which means the government does not want them to know about it, which means they really need to become millionaires so they can know about it, so I can share with them how they can make 30% instead of 10. So good point, Nano. What other questions do we have, guys? Feel like there you got any, a pretty good understanding? Was there any comments in there? Not, not in here. here. And if you guys are on uh, on social media, I know this was a lot of numbers tonight. It might have been hard to track with. If you're interested in getting one of these plans, I want you to go ahead and in the comments just type the word free. F-E-R-E-E. -E -E, or sorry, that's fairy. <laughs> F-R-E-E, -E, free. And Mike will reach out to you, and he'll get you hooked up with the exact plan we showed you tonight. Uh, by the way, if you're an ambassador of ours, you can offer that to clients. We'll teach you how to do it. Um, Michael Kerrigan is an example of somebody that's building a business off this part-time. He's gonna transition full-time into that over the summer. So we'd love to help you do that too. Uh, and we are looking for staff. We're actively hiring now. So we got a front desk literally being set up right now. We got a retail store opening up. We need people in here that know how to sell. So if you're interested in that, let us know. This is what we do for people. And if you're watching tonight, I do wanna find out what your wants and needs are. So if you've got stuff financially right now that you feel like is holding you back, Communicate that to us because we're a company right now that wants to help you. We want to bring you on as a client. We want to find a way to do business. And so if there's problems that you need solved financially, let us know what you would want and need from us for us to be able to earn your business so that we can make that happen too. So guys, thank you for watching. Again, I'm Jerry with Wealth Dynamics. This has been our Friday night training. Have a fantastic weekend.